country men, country ladies, after five days of his referral to U.S., I received a call from my brother, right Honorable Jacob Olanya. I saw on my phone a phone call coming from him. I received this call. He shouted, Le! I said, oh my God, right Honorable Speaker, I am here, my brother. How are you? We talked, we laughed, we chatted. He told me he was recovering. He gave me assurance. I was happy. I was happy. I knew our speaker was recovering. He told me, Le, I've called you. I'm going to call Honorable Ricky. I'm going to call Honorable uh, Tony. I have started calling with you. Next time I will call you with another number. I will not use this number again. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know that he will not use this number again to call me because he was going to be with the Lord. I now knew this number will have no network. He will call me with another number. From that time, I have not received any call from him again. Right Honorable Jacob Olanya loved all his members of parliament so, so much. All of them, regardless of their party, regardless of where they come from. He looked at that parliament, a parliament of Uganda. He had very vast knowledge. He knew the law. He's a senior lawyer. And that is what this country is going to miss. That is what this northern Uganda region is going to miss. This is what we, the West Nilers, are missing. The country has lost a hero. The country has lost an icon. I thank His Excellency so much for trying. Your Excellency, you have tried your best. We have tried our best. Ugandans have prayed. But the word of God says there's time for everything. Our beloved brother has gone to be with the Lord. All along we have been on our knees praying. Praying to Almighty God to save him for this country. Our prayer has been that God saves him at least for this term. For the 11th parliament to fill his, his, his knowledge. To benefit from his vast knowledge. That has been our prayer. May his soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you very much. And I want Petru Bitoranya for his discipline, timekeeping, he was very respectful, not vindictive. He suspended me together with five other MPs during the passage of the Public Management Act. And uh, he was telling me to apologize and I refused and he brought policemen to drag me out of parliament. But Oranya was not vindictive. He sent me the Honorable Mwanga Chivumbi of, of Tambara seeking reconciliation. Along the way, we started working together. I entered, I, I actually felt safer going to the office of the Deputy Speaker than going to the office of the Speaker that had a lot of protocol. I interacted with him when he was running for speakership. I sought to interact with the Honorable Rebecca Kadaga and I sent Honorable Osman Vasalio, but she never gave me an opportunity. The reason I stood for, for speakership was because Parliament was no longer functioning as an institution. It had been turned into a personal estate. And he told me he was also seeking to do the same. He had actually started, he even proposed that we should have a debate on the future of Uganda. He showed the choice that, irrespective of where you are coming from, he showed Uganda, irrespective of who you are, you can make it to the top of this leadership in the country. Jacob Olanya did not go on disputing any issue without fact, without authenticity, without data. A man of experience, a man of exposure, a man of great humor. The way he has been conducting the business on the floor of parliament, oh my God, this was the right man for this position. Olanya I have told people and I have kept saying so as a debater. One debater I'll never forget was on the sale of Uganda Commercial Bank. 
UCB had been sold to Westmon, uh, which had teamed up with the Greenland Bank, a sale that went wrong. So the second sale to Stambik Bank was done by Bank of Uganda against the resolution of Parliament. So there was a sitting of Parliament in which MPs debated whether Bank of Uganda had the powers to sell Uganda Commercial Bank or not. That debate was led by Jacob Oranya. He spoke for two hours. You see, Oranya became a speaker because of his merit, not because he's an actual. I don't think people voted him because he's an actual. They voted him because he's a good lawyer. He had been a deputy speaker. He's been a chair of Committee on Legal and Parliamentary Affairs. If the next speaker comes from actual, for me, by the way, it doesn't bother me, even if we have a speaker from Kenya. Haven't we had the Chief Justice in Chichilis, who is a Ugandan? Chief Justice in another country who is a Ugandan? I want a good speaker, I don't care where he comes from. We cannot blame the creator why he has taken him because we are not there when he was planning to uh, get Olanya to this world.